Hello, so welcome to episode 4. In episode 4, I'll be telling you about the history of 3D printing, the timeline of it. Why do I think this episode is important? Is because that in 3D printing, there are many different companies and different techniques. So I think it's worthwhile to, to have a timeline to see when each company actually developed their technology. So, so stay tuned to episode 4. So firstly, I want to talk about the technologies that were developed prior to the first development of the first 3D printer. So back in the 40s, 50s and 60s, computers was invented and NC technology was invented, numerical control technology. Then people start developing laser technology, robotics technology and the printer, the 2D printer. So with that, people start combining computers with robotics, with manufacturing. So it develops the computer-aided manufacturing technology and the computer-aided design technology. And in the 80s and 90s, the material development starts to improve. So we see the development of the photopolymer. So polymers that can cure under a light source energy. And then in 1988, with all these technologies in place, the first 3D printer was developed in 1988. It's a SLA technology. So with this, I'll move on to the current state of the timeline. So after the first 3D printing technology, the SLA technology was invent was developed by 3D Systems in 1988. Shortly after, the selective laser sintering technology was developed by EOS. And then in 1991, there is a number of technologies that were invented, such as the FDM, Fuse Deposit Modeling Technology by Stratasys, the SGC, Solid Ground Curing Technology by Cubital, and LOM, Layer Object Manufacturing by Helisys. So basically, in this video, I won't be covering the technologies per se, but I will be telling you the names of the technologies and the companies who invented it, because... Some of the companies are still very much around, so it's good to be able to link the technologies with the companies. And, and you could also find out about the companies and the technologies by just googling the name and the company's name. So, the next part of the timeline. So, next on the timeline, 1993, the liquid binder technology was developed by MIT. So, this is like the, the 3DP printer. So then there's a break in between, so in 1997-1998, the laser additive manufacturing on, or you could also say the lens technology was developed firstly by MTS System Corps and later by Automac. So then in 2000, the polyjet technology was developed by Object. So Object is currently, is currently now part of Stratasys. So in 2000 and 2001, there's really a, uh, quite a big development in the metal 3D printing on the powder bed side. So we have the metal SLS and we have the SLM. So there, there, there were a number of companies, but I'm, I'm pretty sure I didn't list all of them here. But the ones that I know and the ones that I referenced from the Wallace report was that EOS, Concept Laser and SLM Solutions. So then in 2001 the DLP technology was the DLP technology was developed by Envision Tech. So we we'll move on to the next part of the timeline. So the next 3D printing technologies that were developed was the BioPlotter in 2002 by Envision Tech as well. So in 2002 we also see the development of the electron beam melting technology by Arcam. It's a powder bed fusion technology. And in 2003, we saw ultrasonic additive manufacturing technology by Solidica Incorporated. In 2007, we see LOM again, except the use, but except it, it uses paper technology by MCOR. And in 2007, the electron beam freeform fabrication technology was developed by NASA. 
So this is a filament based kind of EVM technology. So because in space you can't possibly use the powder bed technology. So yes, the next. So in 2007, we have the development of the rip wrap technology by the University of Bath. Basically, this allowed the commercialization of FDM technology. Then in 2008, we have the MEMS Digitalist technology. Basically, this is a micro electro mechanical system technology. So it is a new exposure system as compared to previously we see. So this is this is developed by Huntsman Advanced Material, but it is now taken over by 3D Systems. So that's it. So in the future, I think, or the future, or, or even just currently, we can see a hybrid of technologies: people mixing technologies together, or people mixing additive manufacturing technologies with conventional technologies. So this is basically the timeline of 3D printing. Hope you learned something and. Hope you get used to the names of these companies so that when you do see the name you can associate the name with the respective 3d printing technologies which i will cover in the later episodes thanks so lastly the summary i think from the slides you can see that a lot of the technologies that power 3d printers today have been developed in the last 20 years Many of such technologies are now developed enough to be considered by industrial companies. So a lot of industrial companies are currently doing feasibility studies to see whether additive manufacturing can be incorporated in their manufacturing business. And I also see that there are currently quite a bit of hybrid technologies that are developing. So it should be a pretty exciting. So I hope you learned a bit more about the landscape of 3D printing, the different companies, the, a bit of the technology names, so you get used to the terms. So with this, this is the end of episode 4, and I'll move on to the references. So the references, I think this is a very important aspect of my video, and I want to develop myself to make better references and to do better references. So basically, I've put footer notes on the slides above, as you can see where the references come from. So hopefully you know that a majority, a majority of the ideas and the work that done to research these slides were done by a module that I took in university and also by the Wallace Report. And my YouTube series is basically a presentation of these ideas so that people could understand these technologies who are not currently in universities or who do not have the access to the Wallace report. So once again, I hope you enjoyed episode 4 and stay tuned for episode 5 next week. Thank you.